Hey, it's Andrea, the South African girl living in Canada, and we are back at it. We are doing video number two today. Vincent Hayes is with me, and we're at Staples. Thank you so much, Staples. Plug in for them. We are in their meeting room in Oakville, um, and we get these offices for free, which is really nice to record. Um, Vincent, I'm excited about our topic today. Yeah, let's talk about RESPs. Oh my and, word, and there are so many acronyms, right? When you come to Canada, there's RESP, RRSP, TFSA, RRIF, RESP, ECT. Okay, no. All right, so today let's talk about RESP, which is your educational fund trust. It's really there as a purpose to help parents to save uh, education money for their children. It's a great uh, way that the government has put this plan together. Uh, there are very little limitations in terms of how you can invest the money and uh, so we can you know we can dive a bit more into how we get money into that into okay. that fund fantastic this is my most exciting one to talk about because i know we are already drawing down on these funds for my both my girls on university how much money do we need and how do we get it into this fund i've got a son at university and you you got kids as well yes. so uh, we know how much we have Ooh. to save more or less yep so the the rule of thumb that we've used in our calculator within wellstack uh, and people can go there again to yep. determine the the size of uh, goal that they need for their children but really if they go to university now for three four years yeah. we would say at least fifty thousand dollars so obviously it can be less than that if they out of home uh, or more than that if they at race at university so yeah. it can be more or less than that yeah but the way that we've um, seen how it works in Canada is really is that there's a lot of places for kids to work yes. and and there is this culture that your kids can partner with you to help uh, pay for that education plan. You need to get their buy-in, but it you is a culture in Canada, you're right, it's wonderful. These kids work, they often buy their own cars, pay their own gas, so there is room for that as well. And it's not, you know, it's expensive, but it's not like in the US that it's super expensive. Yes, no, you're right on that for sure. So the next question is how do we get money into the RESP? Yes. So basically, um, the government has designed it in such a way that the first $2,500 per child, they will sponsor you another 20%. If you put $2,500 in for your child this year, the government, uh, through the administration company that you use, will put another $500 in for you into that account. Um, so obviously you can put more in, but you're not going to get the benefit of uh, the extra bit above $2,500. Yeah. If you have more than one child, they open an RESP account um, for all, let's say all three kids onto the same plan. And um, so normally it's the primary caregiver, which is normally the, the mum, uh, is open in her name. Money goes into the account. And um, depending on the administrator, you have to phone sometimes the administrator or let them know you put, let's say $500 in this month. Yes. They have to split it equally. Yeah. Or if you have, for example, an older child and you're a little bit behind, you can say, let's put $300 of the 500 into the older child's account yeah. so that you can get to that, uh, I love that. amount uh, you know, quickly. Yeah. I remember when we came to Canada, our kids were a little bit older and so we're a little bit behind. So for those of you that are coming over with smaller kids, the minute, mm. apparently, as far as I know, you need to have PR, permanent residency, to actually have this um, uh, the RESP, but um, the younger you are and get this thing built yes. up, fantastic. I and, mean, and so also, Andreas, as far as I know, you can go back one year. Okay, so if I've missed my contributions oh. last year, yeah, I can go back one year. Actually, didn't know that. But you can't. I don't think you can go back more than one year. Okay. Okay. So with tax-free savings accounts, yes. which we will touch on later, on you can go back, you know, many years. Okay. But so um, on the on the RESP, is just make sure that. If you haven't contributed last year, your two and a half thousand dollars per child, there's still time to make yes. it up. We are both at the stage where our kids are at university and we've had to start drawing down on the RESP. Um, maybe it would be good to let our followers know how that actually works. Sure. It's, it's actually pretty simple. Um, you know, when my son went to university, it was a matter of getting to um, the home page of the university, get a letter that they normally just pre-populate for you. Mm. You download that letter. Um, to as a confirmation that he's signed up, to, you know, and what his tuition fees is. Okay. Send that into the um, company that that uh, uh, you know that opened the account for you. Yeah. And then they will make that payment um, into it was paid into uh, my account or then the child's account. Okay. So there are two pots of money that they build up in, in the RESP. The one is 
my contributions as a, a caregiver mm. as well as the growth. The money that I made um, into this account, I can also draw out or I can let my uh, son get that money mm -hmm. and that's tax free because I paid it with after tax money that went in. The money that grew and the grant money that was added by the government okay. that is owned really by the, uh, by the student, by the child and so that is taxable in the hands of the child. But obviously, you know, when they go to university or tertiary education, they might do some summer job, but I mean, their tax rates are... So low, are, it's so it's nothing. far better. Yeah. So they, really there's no tax to be paid on the growth, growth. and on the grant, but okay. just to know that there are two separate yeah. pots. Got and it. And you can decide where the money comes from if you make the withdrawal. So I think what would be great is your final tips. What would you, what did you tell followers or people coming over, opening or anyone opening an RESP, maybe your top three things? The, Andrew, the first one is um, very often people or, or families do get a child grant mm. um, and so what I would say is um, it's money that the government pays you, <laughs> to, you know, to look after your kids mm. and so that grant money that government pays you anyway, mm. take that money and put it into RESP. Uh, if you put it into RESP, the government gives you another 20%. Yes. Okay, so they give you money for free, you put it in and you get more money for free. The, the second one is just to make sure that when you open the account is that the risk profile is matching you know the age of the child so yes. obviously you want to be a little bit more conservative if the child is three four five years away from uh, eight, being 18 mm. or if it's young children then obviously you can go a little bit higher risk in terms of making sure that there's enough growth in that portfolio and then i think the the last one that we just touched on earlier is that there is this culture you know that, that kids can look after themselves from university my son has been working for four months in summer uh, and he's saving money for this coming uh, here. So, you know, when I advise clients, I do say to them, it's actually not that big one to worry about. You yeah. know, education, uh, I think, will come through the wash, you yeah. know, as they get, you know, as the kids get older and the, f and the, and the families stay in Canada longer. And so it's not a big, it's not a big financial goal. Um, I have to agree with you. I mean, my kids also, both of them, have been working since the age of 16, on and off, on and off. And especially now with university, they both got summer jobs. So yeah, great. I mean, there's enough enough things to do. You know, mowing the lawn. Yes. You know, cleaning the snow, working at Staples, for example. You yes. Know, there's way. You know, no. there's a lot of options for for students to work. There is this uh, partnership between families and children in in Canada that'd be fine. Yeah. How do we actually open the account for an RESP? And we obviously there's m multiple places for people to go to to do their mm. own bank as well. You know. And mm. what we normally advise people is we open an account at a provider that offers ETFs and we had a different video on that. Yes. Uh, so it's just a very simple portfolio that's uh, cost effective and we'll put a link in the description for people if they want to use it. Absolutely. Or everything will be in the description, Vincent's details, how to open the account, all these different things that you need. And if it's not there, you can contact Vincent by email and he'll happily have a chat with you. Thank you so much for your time. I loved talking about this today and I think our next video should be on something very similar. Maybe RRSPs? Maybe. Okay, awesome. There's so many. All right, so thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much, Vincent, Thanks, for your Andrea. time again. Thank you. Yes. Uh, if you like what you saw, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel. Don't forget to hit the notification bell and uh, so that you get the videos as they upload.